Hi everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Chris from Simply Classic and today we are going to do a tutorial on this zipper pouch. It is so cute. These things have been selling for me like wildfire. I cannot stop making them. Like I want to move on to something else and I can't because people keep ordering them. Um, a lot of the ladies here locally are using them for their sewing supplies, but you can use it for makeup, school supplies, I mean, you name it. And what's happening is a lot of them are ordering them for Christmas for their kids and grandkids and all. So let's go over the pouch. First of all, it is a free pouch that I found on YouTube and I made one like a year ago. I mean, it, it wasn't um, anytime recently and somehow somebody saw it and said, oh, I'd like, you know, saw one I made and said, oh, I'd like to have one of those. And I made one for her, then I ended up making two more for her. Anyway, it has just gone crazy. So, this is the pouch. It obviously has a handle on both sides. When you unzip it, it basically lays flat, okay? You have three, well you have two pouches or two openings here that you can put stuff in. You can put things on the outside and then you also have three zipper openings here that you can put items in. So it's got a lot of room for a little pouch. It fits scissors and another pair of scissors and a stiletto and a bunch of clips. I mean, you can do a lot with this thing. And it fits more than this. And then when you zip it all up, ta-da, easy to carry, fits a lot of stuff. I mean, it's just really, it's a cool pouch. So again, I've linked it below. Um, this fabric, I will tell you, isn't it gorgeous? It is from bolts, bags, fabric, and pre-sale. They have a Facebook group. A lot of what they do is pre-order. And I've actually ordered some pre-order things that I'll probably be getting in in the next month or so. Pre-order is, I know it's hard for a lot of people because when you order something, you want it right now. <laughs> but as a supplier, it's hard to order things, hoping somebody's going to buy it and you've got all of your money wrapped up in the inventory and you're just waiting for people to buy it. So I understand pre-orders. I get that people do them and why they do them. And basically what they're trying to do is to bring as much product to us as possible um, without obviously having to stock yards and yards and yards and yards of fabric. So support your pre-order folks. A lot of times the variety and the selection are really huge because they have so much available to them. It's just a matter of getting the orders in and enough to go ahead and place it. And so just have a little patience, but go ahead and order if you can support them. Now this happened to be on her website. It was not a pre-order item. So she might still have some on there because I did buy it recently. So go ahead and check her out. I'm gonna link her below as well. I'm gonna link her Facebook group below um, and also her website. So check her out. The other thing I wanna mention is you do want to use all cotton for this. Um, there's really, I'm trying to figure out a way to maybe use some faux leather for this front piece. I think it would be okay. You could probably do that. But I kind of, I don't really think it's made for faux leather, okay? It's really a cotton uh, fabric type of pouch. So don't use waterproof canvas. Don't use cotton canvas. Use 100% cotton. And it'll go a lot quicker, a lot better for you. I used my domestic machine in this video, and then I switch over about halfway through to the big guns here, um, the, the industrial. 
And I do that because my industrial does not like sewing cotton fabric. I mean, it's just not made for that. So when I have two pieces of cotton fabric I'm sewing together, this isn't it. I'm going to my domestic. So you're gonna see me kind of bounce back and forth. It is domestic friendly. I made sure to show you how to keep all of the interfacing out of the seam allowance so you can do it on your domestic. My domestic is wimpy. It's not one of those um, kind of mid, I don't know what they call them, mid industrial or part industrial. It's not one of those machines. It is just a domestic machine that likes to sew two pieces of fabric together and that's it. So <clears throat> if you've got a little bit heavier duty machine, you're gonna be fine with this bag, no problem at all. So I hope the tutorial helps you make some fun bags. Um, a lot of times when I do this, I use all three different color zippers in here instead of doing all the same color. So it's an opportunity to really explore your creativity, make some fun bags and be nice and bright and happy. So let's get sewing. Okay, let's go over our pieces. So the, if you watch the video, you see it's all in centimeters and we're gonna, I'm gonna convert it to inches for you. And there's not that many pieces to the bag you, um, and they're pretty easy to cut. The bag itself is nine and a half inches wide. So most of what you're doing here is gonna be nine and a half inches wide. So that makes it nice and easy because you can just cut two nine and a half inch strips and then go down and cut the pieces you need. So we're gonna start off with the ones that are not nine and a half inches. And you need four pieces that are four inches wide by 16 inches long, okay? You're going to cut a piece of woven interfacing that is three by 10, and you're going to fuse it in the middle. But you noticed I fused it at the very top here and left the bottom with the half inch unfused. You're gonna do this with two of the four pieces, and then two of the four pieces you're just gonna leave unfused. Then you need one or two pieces that are three by four, and that's for the little tabs at the end. You need a piece that's nine and a half by 13 and a half, and that's for the main body. So this is, um, you're gonna put fusible fleece on the back of this, and you're gonna cover the whole thing, fusible fleece. You could, Keep it a half inch out of your seam allowance on each side over here if you feel like your machine might struggle. But as you see when we go through, we're gonna keep the stable or the interfacing out of the seam allowance on everything else. So I think you're okay to fuse this whole thing. You're gonna need four pieces that are eight and three quarters by nine and a half. So I've got two of these two of these, not eight and three quarters by nine and a half. You wanna fuse your interfacing, your interfacing's eight and a half by eight and three quarters, and you're gonna fuse it so you have a little half inch on each side of these. And you're gonna do that to all the back of all four pieces. You need six pieces at nine and a half by four and a third, or four and three eighths and you're going to cut your interfacing eight and a half by four and three eighths. And you, again, you're gonna leave it on the sides here, okay? So I have six pieces there. This is for the pockets, two, four, six. You're gonna need one 25 inch number five zipper. You're going to need three nine and a half inch number three zippers. Now, mine happen to be all the same color for this bag, but have fun with it. I've done them where they're all three different colors inside and then a different color even for this and just made them really fun. And I think that's what people like about them. So to get started, the first thing we're going to do is take these 10 by four inch pieces. I'm gonna put two of them right sides together. So I have one piece with my interfacing and one piece without my interfacing. I'm gonna put them right sides together and I'm gonna fold them in half the long way. 
Okay, so match up the ends here. Okay, so I got them right sides together and I'm just gonna fold them in half like this. Now, from the edge where your interfacing goes all the way to the top, we're gonna measure four and a half inches over and make a little mark. So I'm gonna put the camera down so I can start showing you what I'm doing here. Let me move this over. Okay. Okay, so here it is. I've got it folded in half. Make sure all your ends match here. And from this top edge where the interfacing is, I'm gonna measure over four and a half inches. And I'm gonna make a mark. So four and a half. It should be close to the end of your interfacing. Then you're gonna take, and you're gonna cut an angle. Make sure all your ends are straight here. Mine are look like they're a little funky. And you're gonna go from this point that you just marked all the way to the corner. So here you are, you're gonna put your ruler from this point over here to this corner down here. And you're gonna cut that off so that you have an angle there. So. Still didn't go through. Right here. Okay. So now we have these little ends. Throw those away. And we have these pieces ready to clip together so we can sew them together. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some clips. up here. Alright. Ouch. Click my finger. Alright. I'm going to set this aside. Take my other one and do exactly the same thing. So line them up. Fold it in half, measure over four and a half inches, make a mark, from that mark down to the corner, go ahead and cut it off. have my iron heating up and what I'm going to do is I, I've made so many of these and I do usually four or five of them at a time so the way that I have figured out to be quick with it is I sit and I do all the sewing so I'm going to sew these two and then I'm going to sew all of the pieces and pockets together and then once I have everything sewn then I go over to the iron and press it all. And then I come back and do all my top stitching. So I'm not doing one piece, going to the iron, doing the other piece, going to the iron, sewing one pocket on, going to the iron. That just takes up too much time. So we're gonna set these aside because we're gonna sew these in just a minute. I'll put this aside here too. And now we're going to get all of our main piece ready. 
So you want to take one of your pieces that's eight and three quarters by nine and a half. So I have at the top where the interfacing is off out of each side. I use eighth of an inch double sided tape here because I don't want to do a pass to baste and then a pass to sew. Again, that takes up time and I'm trying to be quick with these. So I'm just going to put some double sided tape all the way across. And I take one of my zippers. If, burn the ends of your zipper if you hadn't done that yet, just so you don't have any problems. I don't put my zipper pulls on until after I sew all this together. So peel this off and lay your zipper right side down. Then take one of your pocket pieces. We're going to put double sided tape on one side of this. And you see I'm using um, my domestic machine here. My industrial machines do not like just cotton like this. It's just not going to work. So um, I used an eighth of an inch double sided tape because it stays out of my seam allowance. We're going to do a quarter inch seam allowance here. And my machine, I can promise you, does not like double sided tape. So if it was in the seam, it would not work. I can promise you that. So lay this right side down. And y'all know how to do this. This is the normal, normal thing here. And we're going to go ahead and sew this using quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna move you over. Hopefully that's a good angle. Let's go ahead and sew both of these first. When I do this here, I usually use about a third of an inch seam allowance. Now, when we sew this corner here, sew off the edge, turn it, start by sewing on the edge and come back. And then we're going to do our little trick where we fold this down to get a nice crisp corner. It works better if you sew off the edges and don't backstitch. Don't worry about backstitching because we're going to fold this, we're going to turn it, and we're going to top stitch. And your, your stitches are not going to come out of that. Okay? So we're going to start here. You want to backstitch at the beginning and the end, okay, on each side here, but not when you're stitching off up here. The other tip is to sew with the interface piece facing you because as you know a lot of times when you sew your fabric walks that's why you have walking foot machines if you sew with your interfacing up you're gonna have less of a chance of that happening So the other one, same way. Okay, so when we flip this, we're going to fold this at each seam, okay? So I'm going to fold this side at this seam I'm going to fold this side at this seam. So essentially what we're doing is we're making our point before we turn it. I'm going to stick my thumb in, hold it down, with my thumb and my finger here, and then I'm just going to flip this and poke it out. So 
Sometimes you need to do a little fidgeting or, or something, but see how nice that is? And I, we didn't cut any seams. We didn't trim any edges. Okay, so I'm gonna fold, fold, fold this down, flip, and now we're good to go. So I'm gonna put this aside so that I can take it to the iron. Here we go. So now we're going to go ahead and sew this on. I'm going to switch to my zipper foot. These clips out of the way. And you do want a back stitch here. Okay. So now we're just going to pretend like we're making a pouch. I say pretend. We are. Essentially, we're making a pouch. We're just going to flip this around just like that. We're going to take another piece of our fabric here. Again, make sure you have it going the right way. We're going to put the double-sided tape on this side here. Get that peeled off. I get this double-sided tape from Amazon, and I will link it below. It is, um, you know, it's not super duper sticky, but it's perfect for putting zippers on. I use it all the time because it does save that extra pass of having to baste your zipper on. So now we're going to take our zipper and we're going to put it right side down. Lining up the edges of your fabric. Just like that. We're going to take another zipper pocket, pocket piece, smaller piece. Do the same thing. Put some double-sided tape on here. Now, when I do these um, and I'm not filming, you know, what I do is put all this double-sided tape on first. So I put double-sided tape on one side of each of these smaller pieces, on two sides of the larger piece, on two pieces, and then on one side of the larger piece, on two pieces. Okay, so you're going to make sure your pocket pieces are right sides together. And you're going to line up the top here. And then we're just going to sew that on. Okay, so... When you fold this back, you have, let's pretend we just have a pouch, okay? And there's our pocket for the pouch, and we're all good to go. Okay, make sense? 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to pretend this isn't here and we're going to start from scratch. We're going to make a pouch again. So here's our top piece, our eight and three quarters. We're going to eight and three quarters by nine and a half. We're going to go ahead and stick the double sided tape on. I'm going to add the zipper. Let me burn the ends of the zipper. I did not do that yet. Where did I put my lighter? There it is. Okay, stick this on. Grab a pocket piece. And these pouches are so fun because you can do so much with them. I love that. I think that's what attracts people to them. <clears throat> it's that they're so fun and colorful. And we're going to put this right side down. Okay, Let's sew that on. So we're going to fold this back. So now we're going to make the other side of our zipper pouch. So we're going to take another piece. Put our tape on. Put it on our zipper, lining up the edges here. Actually, I like to do it this way. And then we're going to put a pocket. So it's just like you're making zipper pouches, but they're just all attached. To each other. It's okay. All works out perfectly here. All right, so we're gonna sew this on. And now, we have another zipper pouch, essentially, okay? So see how this is just like a zipper pouch, our, zipper, our, our lining is shorter, but it just so happens that we have another one attached over here. They're just attached to each other. Okay, so now pretend this isn't here. And we're going to do it again. So, one more zipper. Grab my edges here. And then a pocket piece. Okay. 
Now, another way to speed this up, and especially if you're using all the same fabric on the inside, is I just cut a nine and a half piece, nine and a half inch piece, the entire width of the fabric. Then I cut an eight and a half inch piece of woven fuse and fuse it all on in one piece. Just use my heat press, stick it on there and fuse it on. Then I go back and cut all my pieces. It makes it a lot quicker. Otherwise, you're cutting your pieces, you're cutting your woven fuse, you're fusing them together, and you have an extra cutting step in there. So now we're going to fold this back and get our last piece that's eight and three quarters by nine and a half inches. <laughs> I guess I should add that inches. And if you use centimeters, just refer to the video. She gives you all the measurements. take our last pocket piece, do the same thing, oops, 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 oh. I never make it through a day without dropping something in my sewing room, usually multiple times. this on. All right, so I'm going to move you out or move you over here so you can see this. So now what we have is from the front, you see the four pieces of larger piece, four larger pieces, I guess I should say, with the zippers in between. From the back, they each have a pocket attached. See that? Okay. It's, so it's just a series of zipper pouches to just all sew together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my iron and I'm going to open up my zipper pouches, my, my lining here, and I'm just going to make sure I pull them nice and tight, and I'm just going to iron each one of these down, okay? Just like this. Just going to iron it down. I'm going to do that for each zipper. I'm also going to go ahead and iron my two side pieces. So I'll do that, and then we'll come back. Okay, so I have my two side pieces pressed, ready to top stitch, and then each one of these pockets is then pressed. So what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch down each side of each zipper. Okay. When you do this, make sure that your pockets are not together. Make sure you open up your pockets before you top stitch. Otherwise you will sew your pockets together. I may or may not have done that before. I'll let you decide <laughs> what the answer to that is. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to go over here. And now, you know how a lot of times I tell y'all I switch my thread colors out when I'm doing bags? I don't do that for these pouches. This is just a real fun, colorful pouch that, um, you know, I just think that it's fun to have the different colors. Now, the other thing you're going to do is you're going to see me use my hump jumper just to do this. This machine, it's a wimp. 
I mean, it cannot handle bulk. It cannot handle bulk and it cannot handle double-sided tape. It hates both. So you probably are not gonna need to use your hump jumper for this. I just have a wimpy machine, which is okay because I have my industrials to do the heavy stuff, but even this is not enough for an industrial machine. So, Okay, so everything's been top stitched. And in the back, what that'll do is hold all your pockets down. Okay, so we are just going to, essentially what's gonna happen is these three pockets are gonna come up like this. See, isn't that cool? Cool, cool, cool. All right, we're gonna go ahead and top stitch these babies right here. Okay, so with everything top stitched, good to go. I'm just gonna cut off my little ears here because you have um, these little ends sticking out because you had an angle there. So those cut off. So we're going to set these aside for just a second. Go ahead and put your zipper pulls on. Okay. Then what you're going to do is take one end here, lay it flat, and you're going to make sure your zipper teeth are at the very top. Okay. You're going to, from your seam, the edge of your seam, you're going to measure down three and a half inches. I'm gonna draw a line. And then you're going to go ahead and stitch across this line and that's gonna stitch your pocket closed. doesn't look like three and a half inches to me. Hold on. Ah, three and a half. I was off an inch. There we go. Three and a half inches. Okay, so it's just closed. Now what we have is one pocket. You see your pockets in there and you've caught the ends 
because if you flip this over, you can see little ends sticking out. One pocket. So we're gonna do the same thing. Take your middle pocket. You're gonna lay it down. Make sure everything else is laying nice and flat. Measure three and a half inches. And stitch across. last one exactly the same way. So when you're done, you're going to have three zipper pockets, essentially in one. Okay, once you have this completed, what I like to do is just lay it down and make sure all of my ends are matched up. And if they're not, go ahead and trim them down. So of course your zipper is going to overlay just a little bit. And you can see I have a little bit of extra fabric right there. So I'm just going to take that to my cutting table. I'm going to lay my ruler on there and I'm just going to cut down this side to cut that little bit of extra off. And this side, you know, it's got a little bit extra too. And that just happens sometimes when, you know, you're trying to match all of these layers up and sometimes they might be off a little bit. So no worries, just go ahead and trim it up. So now you see I'm nice and trimmed up here. The other thing I did is I went ahead and trimmed any excess that was showing on the uh, pockets here. Because when you sew these seams across, you have a little bit of pocket left over and that's just gonna add bulk. So go ahead and cut that off. So now we're ready to assemble it. This is the point that I move over to my big guns because my domestic machine starts to wimp out on me. But if you've got a decent domestic machine, the reason why we kept all of this interfacing out of the seam allowances is so that you could go ahead and do it on the domestic. I do think that you can get it done. You just need to go slow, use a hump jumper, and you'll be okay. So we're gonna take one of our end pieces here and fold it in half. And then we're going to just wrap it around the middle pocket. Okay, so make sure you're grabbing your middle pocket. So I've got one here, one here, and I'm gonna grab the middle one. And I'm just gonna wrap this around, make sure I get it all the way up at the top so that it encases that zipper. I'm gonna clip this on and we're gonna sew this using a fourth of an inch seam allowance. You wanna make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Now before you move on, make sure that you don't have any raw edges here. Make sure that that encased the pocket totally. Now what you're going to do is measure two inches from that seam that you just did. So I'm just going to use my ruler, measure up two inches, and fold at that two inch mark. Fold it again. Make sure it's even. And then I'm going to place this around the next pocket. Make sure you push the pocket all the way to the end of the fold. Clip that on. Make 
make sure it's good and straight. Do the same thing on this other side for the second pocket. So we're going to take this, measure two inches, figure out where we're going to fold it. Take our last pocket and wrap it around. So this is what you should have. So now we're going to uh, sew a quarter of an inch down each one of these. Make sure all of your other pieces are out of the way when you do it. <laughs> The bottom one goes on pretty easy. This top one, you really have to make sure you push these other two ends that you sewed out of the way so you don't stitch over that. And then make sure that, again, you've caught, you have no raw edges here. Got a couple threads. Okay, my pockets are totally encased. So, this is what you should have so far. And you still have these little ends sticking out. So, repeat for the other side. Okay, so here we go. We have our pouch coming together here. So now we're going to put everything together. So take your main piece with your fusible fleece that's on it, put it right side down, and you're going to take your pouch, you're going to kind of open it up here and lay it right on top of your fusible fleece. Now, depending on how you measured your pockets, you know, if you were off a little bit, your main piece might be a little bit bigger, and if it is, don't take it apart, just trim it down, it's okay. Got some threads here, get rid of these. Now the way I do this usually is clip these ends first. And then see how this is kind of, looks like it's off a little bit. I go ahead and pull this tight. And you see I'm off a little bit, that's okay. I'm gonna head and clip this. And I'm actually gonna sew these two ends down first. So you're just gonna base these on about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. side okay now what we're going to do is go ahead and clip. You're gonna to have to pull your little wings here and we're gonna clip them down. Now, your wing is not gonna necessarily go all the way to the end of your bag. That's okay. The other thing is because you have sewn a quarter of an inch in, the end of your wing and the end of your bag is not going to match up with your other pieces here. And what I mean by that is, let me see if I can explain this. 
Um, let me see if I can get it in the light here. So you can see it. So you've got this piece here. There we go. I'm sorry. I still need to get new lighting for this sewing room. And okay, so this piece here is you you had to sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now this is indented a quarter of an inch, right? So when you try to lay this wing it's not gonna go all the way to the edge of this piece of fabric here. It can't because you've sewn in a quarter of an inch. So when you lay this down, it's going to be about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of your fabric. Don't try to pull it and force it to the end. Just let it lay where it wants to lay. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So I'm just gonna pull this out. And when you take this here and you kind of pull it, see how it opens up? You want to do that. You want to go ahead and pull it so that each of these ends here lay down as well because we're going to have to sew those too. So we're going to clip that down. And this is where um, it can get, it's not hard. You just need to kind of manipulate the fabric make sure it does what you want it to do. Okay, so see, you can see it pretty good right there, how it's not going all the way to the edge of the pink. It's a little bit away from the seam, and that's okay. It, when I first started doing this, I was trying to make it go to the edge, and it wasn't going to the edge, and I was like, what in the world? Why is this not working? But it can't. I mean, it's just not going to work that way. Okay, so. We are going to go ahead and sew this down. Now, when you sew it down, your pockets have got to do something and go somewhere, right? So what I usually do is I push my pocket in one direction so I'm going to push my pocket away and I'm going to push this seam here in the opposite direction. And then I'm going to stitch right over that. And I'm going to do that for each one of the pockets as I stitch down. I'm going to push the pocket away and then push the seam down here. Same thing here. Go ahead and push my pocket away, the seam down. Okay, so now we have that all sewn on. So we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. So this time when I sew, since I pushed my pocket in that direction, you know, when I came this way, I pushed my pocket away and my seam towards me. This time I'm going to push my pocket towards me 
and my seam in the opposite direction, just so the pockets are all going in the same, kind of in the same direction, if that makes sense. They stand up straight, but you gotta sew the seam in one direction or the other, and you just wanna make sure you're sewing them in the same direction in both the cases. So at this point, you can kind of see it taking shape because this is going to end up coming up like this, right? You got all these cute little pockets. Okay, so let's go ahead and trim these seams down. Trim this one. And I'm going to just trim this up here. And this as well. Okay. So now we need to go ahead and close these sides. So we're going to take our binding. And we're going to cut a couple pieces to encase the sides. So when you attach the binding, you're just doing a straight line here. It's really great. It's nice and easy. You're just going to roll it, put it around the side. And I actually do clip this on. Um, lay these down. Go ahead and clip it. Clip, clip, clip. If you found that you did not trim your seam allowance enough, meaning the binding is not covering the stitch, go ahead and just take it off to retrim it. Okay, so this is what it looks like. We're going to go ahead and stitch this on. to have my stiletto handy. Okay, and just like that, you have the binding on. Now I always double check and make sure I caught it at the bottom. Okay, 
and it looks good. So we're just going to go ahead and put the other side on exactly the same way. Okay, so here we are, we've got our binding on, everything's looking good, so all we have left to do is to put our zipper on and then our tabs. So take your zipper, your 25 inch zipper, and find the center. We're also going to find the center of these long edges here. So now pull your zipper apart and you want to take your zipper and you're going to put the right, excuse me, the wrong side of the zipper against what the inside of the pouch. Okay, so here's the outside of the pouch. You got the inside. You're going to lay that right on top, just like that. And I do baste this on. Okay, so just go ahead and base this on um, using about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now we want to go ahead and cut two pieces of binding the length of the zipper. So I'm just going to kind of measure it out here. We're going to clip this on the zipper. And then we're going to sew it on. So just start at your end here and clip it on. Now for this part, I do have to switch to my zipper foot on my industrial machine because it does not go far enough over. But 
to, um, to, it doesn't get close enough to the zipper teeth, my regular foot. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and sew this on. We are about done. So I'm going to switch to my zipper foot real quick. Okay, so now that I have my zipper foot on, I'm just going to go ahead and sew this binding on the zipper. Move you over a little bit. Here we go. All right, and then let's do the other side. Okay, I'm popping in here because I somehow lost my footage of telling you how to fold the zipper tabs to get them to work. So what you want to do is on the short ends, you're going to fold it in half inch. You go to the iron and you're going to press this, okay? So you're going to have that folded just like that, half inch. Then you're going to fold this and this so that your ends meet. Let me set it down for a second here. So you want, it's kind of like, you know how we draw a line down the middle and make the ends meet? You're going to do that same thing. You're just going to press it. So it looks like this. Okay. So once you get that all pressed, we'll go back to the video and I'll show you how to attach it. Okay, now that we have this pressed, we're just going to slip our zipper inside of here. about halfway down, and then you're gonna fold this edge up. Now, I usually feel, and I don't want my zipper to go all the way to the edge. I wanna pull this so that there's, there's about a quarter of an inch there. Okay, so I can feel here the edge of my zipper, the edge of my zipper is right here. So see, I have about a quarter of an inch leeway there. And that's because we're going to sew this onto the bag to make the handle and it gets really thick. So go ahead and clip that. Now, when you, when you do this, 
Remember, this is gonna go upside down and it's gonna get sewn. So you're gonna see the back side. So just make sure if you have one side that you want to look better than the other, you know, make sure your, your back side looks good and pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna slip this in. Flip this up. Make sure I got a little space there. And then clip it. Okay, so now when we sew, we're not gonna sew down here where the fold is. We're going to start right about here where the fold is. Okay, on this side, but on the side piece here at the bottom, maybe start a little bit up. You're gonna go up, you're gonna go across, and you come back down and back stitch in both places. Yeah, a little bit. If you need to put a little double-sided tape here, you can. I'll go ahead and do that so you can kind of see. That will help you keep it closed as you sew. That's probably a better option here. So let's just put a piece of tape across there. Bring it up. So now that will stay closed. That's a lot easier. Now, if you're using a domestic machine and you have a little trouble with this, keep don't maybe don't put any woven fuse in there. I've done it both ways and it works fine without the woven fuse. I just like the um, interfacing gives a little more, um, you know how interfacing does, just gives it a little more stability. I guess is the right word. A little beefier. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the other one. Okay, we're up to the last step. And that is to sew these little handle pieces down. Take a piece of quarter inch double-sided tape and put it on the right side, right at the edge here. So I say the right side, that's the side where your zipper is the right side. You see the face of your zipper. The front, 
Let's just say that. Front. Put it on the front. Then you want to open up your bag. And you're going to remove the little piece of double-sided tape here, the backing on it. And you're going to flip it down. And you're going to lay your pouch down and just stick it right in the middle there. So right where the middle pocket is, you want to just center it. And then we're going to stitch it on. And I'm going to back stitch on this a couple times. Now this is the place where if you, um, your domestic machine might have a little bit of a hard time. I'm trying to figure out, maybe y'all can figure this out and post below um, this video. I'm trying to figure out a way to use a rivet there instead of sewing. But I hadn't figured that out yet. I'm sure there's a way. I'm sure there's something you can do, but I don't know what it is yet. Keep working on it. I'm sure I can come up with something. All right, so we're going to do the same thing here. Just like that, the pouch is done. this tutorial helped. I know a couple of you have said that you tried to watch the original video and it was a little confusing. And it is a little confusing when you put it together because you're attaching, sorry that light's kind of crazy, you're attaching a pocket to a po zipper pocket to a zipper pocket and then you get kind of crazy. You get kind of confusing. First time I made it I thought what the heck are you doing? But um, it's really not that hard. Once you do it a couple times you all have it. So I hope it helped. Make some pouches. Christmas is coming. Yes. Ooh -wee. So um, enjoy and happy sewing.